So again, just a quick reminder, come up from the ground. It's worth maybe just touching upon that a little bit. We'll spend a little bit of time. And contrasting again is very important. How do we normally get up? Maybe if I exaggerate just a little bit, pulling up, pushing up. So even just getting up off the ground or it could simply be your chair. You can practice internal arts where we're using the ground and our skeleton and we keep our body open and in fact expanding rather than contracting to come up. So I release down, weight underside, let my weight press me up, let the ground push me up and then continue to rest in the ground. We we'll always have to make sure that our skeleton doesn't depress. If I say relax on the ground without any other information, we'll just kind of slump. So the skeleton is very aligned and the muscles are relaxed. And it's a strange imagery, but in Tai Chi, we often say the muscles hang off the bones Muscles are just drooping, melting off the bones. Just gives you an idea, we want the tissues relaxed, but the skeleton is not drooping. It's very clear, very bright, very upright, bone on top of bone. Let's just work that a couple times. So sitting here, we should be weight under side, not sitting up, weight under side, but not collapsed, nice and open. How much can I come up without pulling up and without contracting. So I release down, that pushes me up. I release down, that sends my leg forward. And this might be the most challenging part maybe. I press down into the ground. Through my leg and my foot, I press down into the ground, and keep my alignment. So I never have to lose my root. My, I'm always connected, rooted. So maybe uh, again, contrasting is very educational. So let's on purpose pull up, hike up, Maybe what you'd normally do, coming, coming up, feel what's happening there. And this is very, very different than the normal approach. We use our awareness, our self-responsibility is our posture, our alignment. And then we use natural forces to do the work for us. Our work is how we are present, how we are shaped, our being. So our responsibility is how we be, our being, and then we can connect to other forces. So releasing down, sends me up. Releasing down, pops that leg up. Releasing down, and pressed up. Okay, and then we maintain that quality in that we're not standing up away from the ground, not holding ourselves up. Again, the personal responsibility, the awareness and intention to align our posture, basically our shape, we're aware of our shape, responsible for our shape. And then we can connect to the larger natural world, letting our weight into the ground, letting the ground support us, and in fact, open us up even more. And then letting the belly release, resting the mind and breath in our center. And with each out breath, we can consciously release a bit more tension. So how open can we be? Open and spacious, yet relaxed, released. So weight underside, but open skeletal structure. All the weight is drifting down, just like water, as if water were dripping off the body. The weight is just dripping down. Now let's go into our basic IT body shape. So 
feet out a little bit wider than shoulder width, toes out, knees out. And right away, before we bring the arms out and up, even this here, there's going to be a tendency to hold in, hold up. We want to hang the hips, hang the hips, and that will take the depression out of the lower back, make it virtually straight, hanging the hips. Of course, physically, what that means is all the work is in the legs. And that's why people aren't hanging out and standing in a grounded way because they're holding themselves up all the time. They're standing with their upper body, their neck, their ears, they're standing with everything, they're spreading all that work out and the tension throughout their upper body. So the legs are never developed. So we want our base to be solid and strong so we can just hang out. So we hang the hips. So this is not hanging the hips, it's tight, hang the hips. So the Ike body shape, position, it's not standing up, the spine is hanging, hips are hanging, the spine is stretched long as the hips hang. The top of the head is pointing right to the sky, so that's nice and open and long as well. Then the elbows roll forward. Again, the normal thing is to lift the shoulders, right? So another thing is very different than normal. You want the shoulders down. So rolling the elbows down and forward will pull the shoulders down. So the shoulders are down, forward, and out slightly. Down, rolling forward, slightly out. And you want to hang from here. See if you can weight under side is one process to work with. This is weight upper side, weight under side. Again, without any subsequent collapsing, weight under side, but nice and open. Just like we have here, virtually straight. We don't want a curvature here. People tend to tilt their chin up. So this also is filled back here. So we want that, the back crown of the head pointing up to the sky, not the middle crown, because that'll tend to still lift the chin. It's the back crown. People often say the chin is down a little bit or in a little bit. That's a mechanical way of creating that. So that's a good start. Less doing it mechanically. That's better than not doing it. So chin drops down and in slightly. If we just let the back crown of the head pull it up to the sky, that will naturally create that length and that rotation. And bring the arms down. Now let's practice getting the arms out there, not by coming up. If I come up, come up. You get the arms out there by rolling the elbows forward. So that's just like Minucci, right? And it's just like the same process as Minucci. But see if you can feel the rolling of the elbows forward as opening and releasing the shoulder joints. If I lift up, that tightens the muscles and the shoulders and it compacts the shoulder joint. I want the opposite. So rolling the elbows is a very helpful tool rather than lifting. If I roll my elbows forward, maybe you can feel how that sucks the shoulders down and opens the shoulder joints. So do that a number of times. Rolling forward and out slightly. And in fact, as you do that, try to relax more and more in the shoulders. And each time is another opportunity to lengthen and open the shoulder joints. If you don't feel it now, eventually you will. The literal opening of the space in the joint. So we're practicing releasing the joints, opening the joints. Now let's bring this into a more dynamic action and connect some things together. As we hang the hips, so we're gonna bend the knees a little bit more, come up, bend the knees a little bit, but hang the hips, come up slightly, hang the hips. And when we hang the hips, 
have that stretch the spine. You can imagine either your head stays here and as you hang the hips, that makes a stretch in the spine. So ultimately you want to stretch both ways. So if you have this held in a bracket and you hang your hips, you get a, a good stretch, physical stretch of the spine. Each time you do that, each time you hang the hips, you drop the hips two or three inches, feel the stretch and opening in the spine and that stretching and opening the spine, have that drive your elbows into that rolling motion. So if I make the movement fairly big, I don't want it to be this big after a while. I want it to be a little bit smaller, smoother, but to make it more visible. So I'll stand up in a more exaggerated way. I hang the hips, stretches my spine, and that rolls the elbows forward. Starting up high, hang the hips, and that stretching of the spine pushes or rolls the elbows forward. So I feel that opening up my whole spine and going right through my neck. It self corrects my head and chin. As I'm stretching, lengthening the spine, dropping the hips, I feel that go through my entire spine and it actually self corrects the angle of the head and the neck. So down, up and release, down, up and release. So I hang the hips, stretch the spine, and that rolls the elbows forward. Do that on the out breath. Breathing in is a bit of a rest, a release. You can come back up so you can reapproach it. Breathe out. And notice what part of the body you can really notice. Maybe you can really notice, maybe you can't feel it all. But maybe you can really notice, for example, the lower back straighten or release, or you can feel the hips hanging more with gravity instead of holding the hips and lower back in and up. Maybe you can feel those hips kind of hanging almost with gravity, or maybe you feel some sort of sensation somewhere in the spine where it actually gets longer, or maybe you feel the effect in the neck and the angle of the head, or maybe you're starting to feel those shoulder joints open or release a bit. So notice what you can notice. Eventually it'll be all those things and it becomes like a hydraulic system where one thing affects everything else. And it's not so much a muscular contractual thing, but an opening pressurized outward feeling. That's why I use the word hydraulics. So notice what you can feel Remind yourself to release the abdomen. And so hanging the hips is letting the hips hang with gravity. I'm just, as if I could just drop, just drop from here. I hang the hips like a free fall. A free fall of the hips, that'll stretch the spine. And have the stretching of the spine or the dropping of the hips, directly roll the elbows forward. And then breathe in, release a bit, breathe out, hang, hips are heavy, pulling the spine, rolling the elbows forward. So over time, this will change your posture and your lower back and throughout your back and neck. Over time, this will release and open the shoulder joints, eventually the joints between the vertebrae, the spine will literally open. And of course, eventually it's globally through all the body, all the joints. But the easiest to access for just about everybody would be the shoulders. Breathe in. Relax, rest, release, breathe out, hang the hips. Stretching the spine rolls the elbows forward. Okay, now, not time with the breath. You're gonna hang and stretch continually. So I hang the hips, stretch the spine, roll the elbows forward and have that continue independent of the breath. So you're continually hanging the hips, 
continuous stretch in the spine, including right through the neck and top of the head, and continuous pushing open of the shoulders via the elbows rolling forward. Continuous. Release the abdomen. Notice the tension accumulate in certain areas, especially the abdomen. Consciously release it. Continue the hanging, releasing. Hanging creates opening and releasing. Back of the neck, getting longer, hanging the hips, stretches the spine. The lengthening of the spine pushes the elbows forward. That opens up the shoulders. Good, release, breathe. Let me know if you have any questions about this process or any of the details. Take this into Hami no Kamai, exactly the same process. We're gonna start with the kind of the contrasting or the resting and then applying, resting and applying. Exactly the same thing that we started with in this shape. We're gonna do it Hami no Kamai. So you can make it quite obvious at first where I'm gonna start quite high. Then as I breathe out, I hang the hips. That stretches the spine and that rolls the elbows forward. So up, I breathe out. Breathe in, release, rest. Breathe out, hang the hips, stretch the spine, roll the elbows forward. And feel what you're doing for the spine and the shoulders, maybe even the neck. And as much as you can, take the muscularity out of it. Try to imagine and feel you're not doing it with your muscles, you're doing it with the movement of your breath in your mind. My breathing out breathes through my body, breathes through my body, breathes through my arms and shoulders. My body becomes empty. In internal arts, we talk about, talk about the body being empty or transparent, the empty vessel. So I want the breath to move through my body, stretching my body open, so it's not my muscles doing it, so minimize the muscle action, try to imagine and feel. You can't use your muscles using the breath movement and your intention. So breathing out is hanging, stretching, opening. Breathing in, a bit of a rest, a bit of a contrast. Opening things up. Hanging, releasing, hanging. Switch to the other side. Breathe out, hang, release. Okay, how are we doing? Any questions there? Now back to the other side. And just like we did here, next step is maintain it. So hang, probably start with the out breath, breathe out. Hang, release, open, and continue hanging. Hips are just hanging with gravity, like a pendulum, just hanging. That continually opens and stretches the spine, which is continually rolling the elbows. Hang out. You might feel as if your feet and legs are entering into the ground. It's a very strong grounding action, opening the spine, sitting the shoulders, have the long spine, roll the elbows forward, opening the body, releasing the body, taking the contractual tension out, allowing a length and an opening throughout the body. And on the other side,
Continuous opening, releasing. Let's take that into movement. Minucci. And just taking the feeling, sensations into movement. Notice when you contract away from those sensations. You start going to normal contractual stuff, tightening stuff, coming in, coming up stuff, and see if you can replace it with that sensation of opening, lengthening, releasing. So of course, we'll tend to lose things once we start to go into movement. That's why normally we're moving quite slow. So we can gauge and notice when we're losing it and then get it back. And it's totally okay to come back to no movement to get a quality of it and then bring it into movement. One of the things that might happen for you when we work with this alignment and process and opening, you become very acutely sensitive and aware when you break those qualities. You become very aware when you're leaning a little bit. This leaning creates a lot of contraction of those long muscles of the back and the neck contracts. So you're not in that opening lengthening quality. So it becomes very glaringly obvious. So it tends to correct a lot of things. The self-correcting mechanism begins to work for you. Other side, and even as you switch feet, continue to hang from the string or hang the spine. And so your legs and hips are free, they're dangling. In fact, let's do this a little bit. Switching your feet, not even use the hands or the hami. Switching your feet with your hips still hanging. Your spine pulled long and your hips hanging. So no tight curvature here, no shortened curve here, you're hanging. And so we have both a groundedness because we have weight under side, we're hanging, but because we're, the hips are hanging free, the legs are very mobile and light and free. So you have both yin and yang working. Grounded, yet mobile. Heavy, substantial, yet light and buoyant. Hips and legs are just hanging, just like your arms are hanging. And then again into movement, keeping everything not only open, but opening. Again, the easiest joints for most people would be the shoulder joints. Can you have them continually, continually opening? Even if that's just a fraction of a millimeter, every moment it's opening a tiny bit more, releasing the abdomen. So that's why, it's one of the reasons why the arms will be down here, here or here, rather than here. If the hands are falling here, it's because there's a lot of tightness and tension. If I'm opening, releasing, they'll tend to be much more open and long. Let's do this a little bit with a strike, showman, and approaching the strike again, not as this hacking, contracting kind of thing, but this elongating thing. So raising the arm, that's a lengthening process, just like your hami no kamai. Pulling the elbow forward, keeping everything open and actually opening through the strike. Process of releasing and opening. Releasing and opening. Not a banging or forcing or contracting thing, but an opening releasing phenomenon. And it'll start to feel very, very pleasant, very good. So not only is it a, a martial technique and drill, it's therapeutic for the body and the mind. Let's try a few on the other side. So start by hanging the hips, stretch the spine, roll the elbows forward, 
opening, 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 and stay with that feeling and quality as you go into the movement. Every aspect, every millimeter of the movement is happening because of the opening. So not only are you opening and moving, the moving actually happens because of the opening lengthening. So the opening lengthening are actually the gears that drive the movement. Hydraulics. Let me know if you have any comments or questions with that. Let's just do that same process with Sayuendo and we'll just do one beat. The process is just how much are you allowing an opening releasing? Hanging the hips to open up the shoulders and roll the elbows. The shoulders are pulled down because the hips are hanging. The shoulders are pulled down because of the rolling elbows. Opening, opening the body. You should feel some stretch in the fascia or deep in the shoulder joint. Now let's go to one side and stay there for a moment, hang out there. Continue dropping the weight through that hip and leg. And just like we did hanging the hip, stretches the spine and roll the, roll the elbows exactly the same, but now we're on one leg. Allow the weight to drop through this hip and leg. Hanging here, weight dropping through that hip and leg, that sends the, that rolls the elbows out to the side. So hang the hips here with the weight on one leg, hang the hips, let the weight fall through that one leg and hip, and let that falling roll the elbows away from the body. And that will, again, suck the shoulders down. Release the abdomen, because we'll tend to tighten up in that stress, right? Maybe you'll feel it correcting the back of your neck. That's really good. So dropping down that leg and hip, opens the spine, rolls the elbows. Take that out to the other side. Hang, free fall, just like we did here, just like we did here. Hang the hip, same process. Opens and stretches the spine and that rolls the elbows away from the body. Make sure the lower back is flattening. The tailbone pointed towards the ground. Then you'll get more open and stretching through the hips and spine. More work into the leg, that's a good thing. So hang out there, breathe. Opening, opening, stretching, stretching. Feel what it does for the neck, other parts of the body. Self-corrects. Okay. Let's take that into one more drill, perhaps. Just tenkanundo, and maybe just the basic version, so you can really focus on keeping these qualities. Keeping these qualities, just like we did in Minucci, just like we just did into movement. And 180 degree. The main thing is the process of opening, lengthening, and keeping that sensation and that feeling through your body, through your joints. And you're just superimposing movement on top of that. And even better, eventually the movement is happening because of the releasing, opening, lengthening. The gears, the hydraulics are moving the body through the stretching opening process. Hips are hanging, continual free fall through the hips and have that transform through the body, have that effect. If your hips are hanging and free falling, feel that affect the spine, feel that affect the elbows and shoulder joints.
Okay. Let's do some specific technique drills, the last two in the eighth Q program. So, Hiromi Sugiyashi, moving back, Ushiro. So the basic Hiromi Sugiyashi coming off line with the front foot, turning 45 degrees. So then we're gonna do a slide step back into a back stance. Try to keep these qualities and feelings with, with you as you do this movement. So hang the hips, roll the elbows forward, open stretch the spine. Front foot comes off line, back foot turns 45 degrees. Step back, slide back so the weight goes into the back leg. So it's a back stance, but we're hanging from the string so we can't lean. Coming into a T stance. Okay, so offline, step back, slide back. So, hear me, Sugiyashi, Ushiro. Front foot offline, back foot 45 degrees, back, slide back. Offline, step back at 45, slide back into a back stance. Whole time you're hanging out, so that's stretching everything open. Offline, step back 45 degrees, slide back. So, of course, now you're to the corner. So, let's do that on two counts. So, each knee, each knee, each knee. Each, each, okay, so now the whole movement on one counts. Each, check, self-assess, get those sensations and qualities, hanging, opening, releasing. So, she. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's go to Migi Hanmi. So front foot comes off line, back foot turns 45 and steps back to the back corner, shifting the weight back into a back stance. Hang out, roll the elbows, extend, lengthen, off line, front leg, step back, back leg, slide back. And two counts, each. Knee. Stop. Still hanging out. She. Oh. Group. Okay. It's here, me, Sugiyashi, Ushiro. Now, Irumi Ayumiyashi Ushiro. So that's going to be the back foot coming up. You turn the 45 degrees, slide back into a back stance. So the back foot comes up, Irumi Ayumiyashi. Ayumiyashi stepping to the back corner, sliding back. Okay. So for Miki Hanmi, back leg, left leg comes off line. Right leg steps full step back, slide back into the right leg, left foot, front foot, slides to catch up. So back foot comes off line, front foot, big step back to the corner, sliding back. Nice and open, hanging out, rolling through. 
Okay, so on two counts. So each knee. Each knee. Each knee. Okay, full move on one count. Each. Knee. Son. She. Go. Broke. Okay, good. So let's do the other side. So he dot e. Back foot, right foot comes offline. Front foot, left foot, big step back to the corner. Slide back. And back stance. So on two counts. Each knee. Each knee. Each knee. Each knee. Okay, a whole move on one count. Each. Check the quality of your joints, your spine, lower back. Tom. She. Oh. Group. So the important thing is the quality of the body and the sensations, opening, lengthening. So no matter what shape you have, forward stance, back stance, moving or not moving, you're just transporting the platform. You're just moving the same shape and same qualities, transporting the platform, transporting the shape, transporting the sensations and qualities through that movement. Okay, let's do misogi, hang out. Let just the weight of the arms be enough to open the joints, hang the hips, breathing in, expanding from the core, from the center outward, opening your joints even more, breathe out, settling back. Check out the back of the neck, lower back. 